Is Rise of the Resistance really worth getting to the park an hour before it opens? Stick around to find out. Hi everybody, it's Ginger with Marvelous Mouse Travels and earlier this week I got the opportunity to ride the brand new Star Wars Rise of the Resistance attraction in Galaxy's Edge at Disney's Hollywood Studios. Now this attraction is brand new, it's only been open since December 5th, so I wanted to talk a little bit about the process of actually getting onto the ride because there is a special system set up by Disney to handle the demand of these first few weeks. And then I wanted to give you a review of the experience and tell you my thoughts as a Star Wars fan and as someone who just loves Disney World. To handle the popularity of this attraction, Disney has actually implemented a virtual queue or boarding group system. This system enables you to get in line through the My Disney Experience app and go and enjoy other parts of the park until your group is called back to ride the attraction. So let me talk a little bit about the process of how you get into a boarding group. Disney's Hollywood Studios opened at 7 a.m. the day that we visited, and so we pulled into the parking lot just after 6 o'clock a.m., and we were in line to enter the park by about 6.18. It took about half an hour for us to get through the entrance to the park. And then right at park opening at 7 a.m., we were able to go onto the My Disney Experience app and join a boarding group. That's what you have to do in order to ride this attraction. You pretty much have to be in the park right at park opening because the boarding groups are filling up very quickly. So once we were actually in a boarding group and we were part of boarding group 55, we were called back to ride the attraction at 10.25 a.m. They give you a two hour window during which you can go back and join your boarding group on the ride. So we decided to make our way back to ride about 10.55. We were on the ride shortly thereafter and completely off the attraction by 11.37 a.m. So the storyline of Rise of the Resistance is that you are the newest recruits for the Resistance and you're informed by Ray that you're no longer safe in your current location. So the Resistance is going to put you on a transport and they're going to try to evacuate you to Leia Organa's secret base. And you're accompanied in your evacuation vessel by Poe who's flying alongside you. But in the middle of being transported to Leia's base, you are intercepted by the First Order and you're taken on board a First Order Star Destroyer. Enemies of the First Order, you have the location of distance base. You will give it to us. Do not apart this vessel, straight to a cell off the ship. And they're going to try to interrogate you to get the location of Leia's secret base out of you. And so you're actually transported to a cell on board the Star Destroyer and then the resistance forces come and they actually break you out of the cell. And so the actual ride portion of Rise of the Resistance is you racing through the Star Destroyer trying to board an evacuation vessel that's going to take you back down to planet Batuu. In terms of the actual mechanics of the attraction, you start and end your time on Rise of the Resistance in flight simulators. So your first flight simulator is gonna be that resistance transport that's supposed to be taking you off of planet Batu. If you get motion sickness on flight simulators, you might wanna close your eyes on this part. I sometimes do get motion sickness on Star Tours, but I actually wasn't bothered by this part of Rise of the Resistance. But after you get off of that first flight simulator, you board an actual ride vehicle and you are physically transported through the Star Destroyer in kind of a trackless vehicle that looks like it's being piloted by a droid. And then you end after that portion back on another flight simulator and that's what's actually steering you from the Star Destroyer back onto Planet Batu. And again, if you are motion sick on flight simulators, you might want to close your eyes during that part. But like I said, it didn't really bother me. 
There also is one short free fall. Um, your ride vehicle from the Star Destroyer actually gets into an escape pod and you're dropped down probably about 10 feet, um, but that really is kind of like a blink and you'll miss it drop. It's nothing like the Tower of Terror. So if free falls scare you, you probably won't be bothered by that part of the ride. So my honest review of Rise of the Resistance, I absolutely loved it. Now I am a Star Wars fan. I've been a Star Wars fan since I was a kid. So naturally I was going to love aspects of this attraction anyway. But I honestly feel like even if you're not the biggest Star Wars fan in the world, you're still gonna love this attraction. The number one reason for that is because there are a lot of different elements of it that can keep your attention. It's not just a flight simulator. It's not just a trackless ride vehicle it's not just a free fall it's a combination of all of those things so there are a lot of different ride elements that are going to be fun and enjoyable for you whether you like the Star Wars theme or not but if you are someone who is a fan of Star Wars or really even just a fan of immersive theming you're gonna love Rise of the Resistance I truly did feel like I was in the Star Wars universe and not on a theme park attraction even the queue waiting in line didn't feel like waiting in line because there's just so much to look at. There are so many little details in the theming and things to interact with that you truly don't even feel like you're waiting in line. And then once you're on the actual attraction, it's 360 storytelling. So there are things to look at. Everything is themed up, you know, up, down, all, all, diff all around you, both sides. It truly is like you are on a Star Destroyer and everything that you're looking at is themed to the smallest detail. So I loved Rise of the Resistance. I not only enjoyed it as a ride, but I felt like part of the story, and I would love to see that be the direction that Disney starts to move with even more of their theme park attractions. I hope you found this information helpful, especially the information about how to actually join a boarding group to make sure that you get on the ride. And as always, if you would like to plan a trip of your own to experience Star Wars Rise of the Resistance, my help is always completely free if you book that vacation through me. And it's the same price to book with me as it is to book on Disney's website. Again, I'm Ginger with Marvelous Mouse Travels, and thank you for watching.